ओके स्टूडेंट्स वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू विथ नेशनलिज्म इन इंडिया वी हैड कंप्लीटेड अ पार्ट टिल नॉन कॉपरेशन मोमेंट ओके एंड वाई एंड हाउ इट इमर्ज हाउ इट वॉज वन ऑफ द फर्स्ट एक्सपेरिमेंट्स ऑफ गांधी विथ इंडिया एंड हाउ इट ट्रांसपायर्ड वी ऑल्सो सॉ द रीजन्स वाई यू नो गांधी काइंड ऑफ कॉल्ड ऑफ द नॉन कॉपरेशन मोमेंट जस्ट वन मोमेंट ओके why uh, gandhi called off the non cooperation movement uh, one or two reasons we saw was uh, wherein uh, you know the plantation workers we saw how they misunderstood the entire concept and all across india there were certain things which happened which uh, because of which gandhi thought that you know the non cooperation movement is perspective has not been well understood by indians uh, there were some violent incidents as well which happened and finally it was called off okay so the non cooperation movement was called off and uh, we have studied in detail the reasons why it was called off so gandhi felt that uh, there is uh, some amount of training that needs to be do uh, done with all indians with all types of political leaders before we actually can successfully uh, implement a certain uh, 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 procedure against uh, or rather a fight against the britishers okay so now we will basically see certain events which have happened before the next movement of civil disobedience comes across okay so the hint of civil disobedience was there in the non cooperation movement uh, if you notice uh, gandhi had said that you know we will uh, uh, not cooperate with the britishers by quitting their jobs uh, by quitting uh, 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 schools colleges etc uh, the lawyers were in inspired to quit their practice okay uh, people who were employed in government jobs they were inspired to leave those jobs uh, so this was a phase okay and if you notice Ga uh, gandhi had hinted at that point of time that if the government tries to suppress this movement then they will uh, call for full civil disobedience okay obviously quitting your job or quitting your schools and colleges is basically disobedience but now if the government suppresses this uh, movement or agitation then we will go for complete civil disobedience so the hint of civil disobedience was already given and now it actually transpires into a proper full fledged movement and before it transpires into a proper full fledged movement there are certain conditions uh, in india which were prevailing which we need to have a clear concept on okay so uh, what were the conditions that were there towards civil disobedience what were the events rather okay that formed the base of civil disobedience movement okay so uh, you know congress basically was at that point of time a party of elite uh, people from different walks of life and uh, learned people basically and uh, they had different perspectives about uh, how to fight with the britishers and how to claim the rights of uh, the rights of indians so they had different uh, ideologies as well so within the congress uh, we saw there were a lot of leaders who want, wanted to participate in elections to the provincial council now if you remember uh, except for chennai okay wherein the members participated in the provincial council elections uh, due to non cooperation movement all the members of congress had actually uh, refrained from participating in the provincial council elections now understand this the britishers basically had had formed this provincial council elections mechanism just to you know ensure that indians do not feel alienated so that they feel that their representatives are there in those elections who will basically fight for justice who will fight for their rights okay so that was the purpose of britishers however they were least bothered about the rights of indians and it was just you know a, a representation purpose it was not something that they actually cared for but yes just to make people feel that their representatives are there in these provincial elections or these uh, council okay uh, and they are members so their rights will be fought for uh, there are people who can actually gather and fight for their rights uh, for the british uh, from the britishers so now since non cooperation movement was called off now these uh, people who were there in the congress they thought let's fight the provincial elections and let's fight with the britishers Uh, by being with them okay by being elected to the provincial councils we will have a better option to understand the inner perspective of the britishers to understand their interior motives and fight 
so that was their perspective and there was a bunch of leaders uh, let's say we have uh, motilal nehru uh, who was basically the father of uh, jawaharlal nehru then we have chitranjan das uh, these people thought that uh, if we fight uh, the ones the elections which we have actually boycotted during the non cooperation movement now it's better we participate in those elections and we contest those elections and by winning those elections we will have a permanent say in the administration of india okay so that's uh, their logic and that's what they thought so they believe that the policies of british can be opposed if they are within the council so according to them the policies of the britishers can be opposed in a better way if they belong to the council they are within the council in a better way okay uh, it will be easier to make reforms to unjust laws so whatever unjust laws uh, britishers are passing th this will give them a better opportunity to understand and oppose the law if they are within the party or if they are within the council just as we have uh, the parliamentary framework today uh, you know there is an opposition which opposes uh, uh, the laws which it feels as uh, unjust for indians okay uh, whatever ways it is so that's what they thought that this will be a perfect example of democracy when we actually fight for the rights of indians by being a member of the council so that we can directly oppose these laws that's what they thought okay the prominent leaders came together to form the swaraj party so if you are contesting elections obviously you will have to have a party a mandate an agenda okay that's how you basically contest elections you cannot just you know go up and uh, say that hey you know my name is this and i want to contest elections you will have to have your perspective you will have to have a common forum of people who are aligned to one cause uh, to a common agenda and that has to be a good majority of people right so they formed the swaraj party these leaders who felt that they can actually fight or oppose the britishers their unjust laws uh, by being a member of the council they uh, actually formed the swaraj party but again some young and dynamic leaders were emerging some young and radical leaders were constantly emerging for example pandit jawaharlal nehru or subhash chandra bose who had a different perspective they knew that their these britishers are there to rule they just want to extend their rule okay and uh, this this entire thing about uh, council elections and all is just a framework to uh, let people know that hey, you know what we are uh, kind of acknowledging your uh, your uh, uh, grievances it's just an acknowledgement that there are grievances there are representatives who are uh, representing your grievances and we will work on them but they knew for a fact that britishers are not going to work on them britishers are least bothered about what are the challenges that we are facing due to their oppression okay so these were the rulers who had a very clear approach uh, and they knew that uh, uh, this contesting elections and uh, you know winning the elections and being in the council of ministers is not going to help okay so they were they were young and radical leaders and they had a different perspective okay had a, a pretty much different perspective within the congress so if you look at it at that point of time there was only one party that is the congress and obviously there was there were leaders who were uh, from elite backgrounds uh, who were knowledgeable people who were educated people who had the entire knowledge of current affairs that is happening all across the world and uh, these people had a clarity of thought that uh, you know this is just uh, going to be a mockery of things okay so they were not supportive of this idea of fighting or contesting for the council elections to represent the rights of indians amongst the british okay uh, once the non cooperation movement was called off you can take a snapshot of the same we will continue with uh, more on this in the next slide <clears throat> okay so continuing with uh, you know the background of uh, of the development of civil disobedience movement so as we saw uh, in uh, non cooperation movement uh, there was a little background of uh, non cooperation movement uh, let's say the crop failure then uh, the first world war forced recruitment of soldiers uh, the custom duties uh, rising up okay so these were all war loans etc so all these were some contributing factors of the distress and discontent that people were going through and that's what uh, was uh, you know at least to collect people for a movement okay that was what transpired for the people to gather up for a movement and a cause okay now we are going to uh, so we studied in the earlier part that uh, there was a rift or there was a slight difference of opinions between the different leaders of uh, congress itself some leaders thought that uh, the only way to fight for their rights is to win the council elections get elected there and uh, you know 
represent your rights in a proper way so that they can take an action which they were not going to and this was clearly understood by a different set of leaders so there was a rift a slight rift amongst the congress leaders okay now there were some other factors some other factors which were creating an impact on the indian political system okay see any political system of the world is first impacted by economic factors okay economy will always have a very severe impact on any political structure or uh, you know dynamic of the world so world economic depression this is this is one of the most widespread i would say you know one of the most widespread depressions that have ever happened okay this is one of the most widespread uh, and impactful okay that's the reason in history this is uh, marked as the great depression of 1930s so it started with 1929 to 1930 basically it started with uh, uh, which started with uh, america the stock prices started fell, uh, falling gdp went low and low and low okay so what is basically depression this is not depression of uh, you know mental depression it is basically economic depression okay depression means basically see uh, uh, recession we know what is recession right for example uh, right now due to corona we know that uh, a lot of uh, activities have not been happening for or a lot of businesses are kind of shut down uh, obviously because of the uh, health uh, issue so recession means loss of economic activity wherein the gdp of a country falls drastically okay now gdp is basically calculated per year per quarter per six months and as in, and so on and so forth so gdp is basically the gross domestic product you don't know, need to go into the details of it but i'm just trying to make you understand what is basically depression so gdp falls okay uh, the statistics on which the development of a country is measured how much of economic activity is happening how much of industrial activity is happening gross domestic product is basically the value of goods and services that are produced in a region in a country uh, uh, for a particular year or for a particular time frame okay so whatever goods and produce services are produced in a particular country for a particular time frame it can be 3 months that is a quarter it can be 6 months half yearly or maybe yearly okay so that is basically a calculative aspect of see until unless there is a need producers will not produce things right so manufacturers or producers or industrialists are not going to produce things until unless somebody buys it okay so they will first understand the demand and accordingly things will be produced now when uh, the country is suffering through a recession it means that the production houses are locked okay the production houses are not producing anymore and there could be n number of reasons okay either they are not getting the value for the goods that and services that they are trying to produce or uh, you know there might be a pandemic as it is happening now okay so there is a recession and we are going through a downturn of economy prices are you know we are not getting the value of things so uh this is basically because of a pandemic because of a, a a corona situation that is there you know we are facing a downturn of economy and it will take a lot of time before economy comes back to normal once again okay so it can be various reasons now obviously we are not going to do the reasons of why it happened it started from america and then it it kind of spread all across the world so economic activities were almost shut down okay people were not having enough of food to eat not enough of money to earn so there was you know a uh, uh, poverty that prevailed not only within the boundaries of one country but it was widespread throughout the world and caused major uh, impacts all across the world okay so economic downturn basically means recession now if this recession continues for two or more quarters two or more quarters okay for example the recession or the downturn in economy uh, or you know if it continues between uh, two quarters one quarter basically means 3 months okay so we divide the entire year of 12 months into four quarters so one quarter basically 3 months now let's say a country is in recession a country is facing downturn of economy and uh, you know uh, it is not able to revive then the government will have to take any uh, immediate steps and measures to make uh, put its economy back on track and if it is not able to do that then what happens it rolls on to the next phase and again 3 months of recession so if we continue like this for 6 months or more of recession then we are entering into a phase of depression which is basically uh, a economic uh, economic hole that is there okay uh, people are not able to earn as as much they were able to earn previously 
offices shops are shut down uh, not enough of business activity or manufacturing activity or industrial activity happening people are not able to gather up money to pay for their expenses so it's basically people are going through a financial stress okay and this was prevailing or obviously world had gone through a world war and uh, it was preparing for another world war so this this world war situation was again arising so between the two world wars obviously due to a huge economic losses and drain out the prices were dropping people were not giving uh, the value of their goods services whatever and this had an impact on india as well okay now how did it impact india india uh, at that point of time was primarily an agrarian country which means that it is basically primarily agriculture sector was there okay so the primary mode of production was agriculture industries were yet to develop factories were yet to develop but agriculture was the main source of income for indians so in india agricultural sectors how were they impacted now whatever crops were produced uh, in the fields and farms the the peasants and the farmers were not able to sell them at their prices that they used to sell previously because of which what happened this created agricultural distress or turmoil see there is a cost involved not only in terms of labor but also in buying these seeds in plowing the fields in employing labor okay in harvesting in taking care in in, in all the pesticides and insecticides that we are using so all these are basically there and obviously uh, climatic impacts are already there so there is an investment that goes behind a uh, production of crops is just not the soil you just not plant a crop and becomes you know uh, it gives you the benefits the moment you plant it so there is a lot of taking care part that happens in agriculture and there is an investment of uh, labor there is an investment of time there is an investment of energy for which you get a price when you when you sell the crop which the farmers were not getting any more because of this depression okay because people were not able to pay the price that they used to earlier so this agricultural sector was going through a huge distress and turmoil okay the entire agricultural sector and when i say agricultural sector it means almost entire india at that point of time because most of india was only involved in agricultural jobs and this was going through a huge turmoil and distress okay we if you if you remember in uh, uh, in uh, non cooperation movement the avadh kisan sabha was developed by baba ramchandra and uh, obviously it was a deviation from the uh, major perspective of fight against the britishers in which the farmers and peasants had aligned to fight against the respective landlords and merchants of their villages so it was a fight of indians against the indians rather than the fight being against the britishers who were compelling these zamindars or landlords to extract more money uh, from the poor peasants okay so uh, avadh kisan sabha was already formed we saw that there was begar because of which uh, peasants and farmers were not getting paid in spite of working the own entire day out neither they were getting the crops uh, the benefits of the crops that they are raising so avadh kisan sabha was uh, formed which was already a platform in which baba ramchandra and pandit jawalal nehru were <coughs> uh, were representing the peasants and their cause the distress uh, of the peasants so it was already there the entire rural or agricultural sector in india was going through a distress or turmoil and uh, that's when you know so, so these are certain conditions okay uh, the great depression had its impact on all the countries of the world at that point of in india uh, sorry all the countries of the world at that point of time and india was not spared as well so india also had an impact and the first place where it got impacted was the agricultural sector because the amount of investment that farmers and peasants had done to raise their crops they were not getting their value of money when they were trying to sell those crops okay so that was creating a uh, and, and since since uh, agricultural sector was the main or the primary sector at that point of time a huge amount of people were impacted by the same effect or cause okay so that was uh, one of the causes or that was one of the events that was impacting the indian political system there is another event that is going to impact the indian political system which we are going to cover in the next slide okay so you can take a snapshot of the same while we move on to the next one okay so there was this uh, the first thing that we saw was uh, basically about uh, the you know uh, there was a great economic depression that was there all around the world which had its impacts in india as well so the the 
द एंटायर लाइफ ऑफ द रूरल पीपल वॉज इन एन अनरेस्ट ओके सो देर वॉज दिस इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटी वॉज नॉट हैपनिंग क्रॉप्स वेर नॉट गेटिंग देयर वैल्यू सो ऑब्वियसली द एंटायर रूरल पॉपुलेशन वॉज इन डिस्ट्रेस ओके नाउ विल आउटलाइन द सेकेंड इवेंट दैट हैपन सो देर वॉज द साइमन कमीशन ओके now what was the simon commission it was basically so the britishers now are thinking that uh, you know now by and large the uh, people of india are uniting for a cause against them they are uh, able to acknowledge that uh, they have to do something uh, in order to sustain their rule in india okay so by and large people are understanding that somewhere down the line britishers are the cause of their misery and their distress so they are they are now uniting so somehow they have to dilute the process of this unification that is happening across india so that's the reason the simon commission was framed and this was framed in 1928 a commission headed by sir john simon this was basically a commission that was headed by sir john simon was given the task to draft the indian constitution so this was given the task to draft the indian constitution now uh, why were they all of a sudden inclined to draft the indian constitution so that uh, you know uh, so that indians get a feeling okay something is being done for them so there is a constitution that is being framed there will be certain policies that will be there in place so that their rights are not violated so that they have a freedom to everything okay so constitution basically means what a, a draft basically on which the entire country runs a set of rules and principles on which the entire country runs so if the indian constitution is being drafted then certainly it's a positive uh, step to from the british government okay so but when this indian constitution was framed it was a widespread agitation amongst the indians and this was simon go back okay simon go back was the uh, slogan that uh, you know kind of uh, that it had, it was widespread all across india reason there was no indian representative in the commission why was this commission being uh, why was this commission being opposed because there was no indian representative there was no indian representative in the commission okay so there was no indian representative in the commission because of which it was backfiring and there was a lot of opposition there was a lot of opposition uh, there was a lot of opposition basically because there was no indian in the commission okay so a lot of opposition face a lot of opposition if you are going to draft an indian constitution and if you are not going to take an indian into consideration what are you going to drive or what are you going to draft because the problems of indians have to be acknowledged the challenges of indian uh, society has to be acknowledged only then you can frame uh, proper laws and policies you are trying to draft the constitution of india without taking indians into consideration okay it's like you know all of a sudden one day you decide to go and cook uh, in the kitchen without consulting your mother she knows where what stuff is there only she is the person who actually knows about it and you will not be able to do it right you know don't know where the salt is kept or where the sugar is kept or where the oil is kept or where the you know different uh, things are kept for cooking a particular product so you just decide one fine day that no i will cook for today it's not going to happen until unless you have a thorough consultation with your mother who is handling stuff so far in the kitchen okay so in the same way if if you are framing policies for indians without consulting india uh, indian people it makes no sense okay and that's why there was a widespread agitation with simon go back now at that point of time viceroy of india viceroy basically means the person who is in charge of india basically okay so lord erwin was the viceroy of india who was then the viceroy of india he saw that you know this this agitation or this uh, protest against simon commission is gaining momentum so he announced dominion status okay now what exactly is the dominion status it was like uh, you know uh, it was like a chance that he was taking to suppress or rather you know uh, take, take control of this agitation and also offered round table conference okay round table conference discussion for future discussion of future constitution in october 1929 in october 1929 for future constitution of in october 1929 okay clear is this understood dominion status and also offered round table conference discussion for future discussion of 
future constitution in so what he did was dominion status what he said was let's kind of discuss uh, how can we frame the constitution of india this will be done by october 1929 so let's have a round table conference with the leaders of india this was just to you know slow down the agitation that was happening across india against the simon commission okay so we will talk about more about the simon commission and how all these things transpired in the next slide okay you can take a snapshot of the same